Okay, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Father, we submit this time into your hands, uh, Lord, this class, this session into your hands. Um, Holy Spirit, we invite you. Uh, we humble ourselves. We, we, we come to you with an open heart. Uh, Lord, with the soil that where you can uh, plant your seeds, and I pray that our hearts will be uh, will be able to receive them and bear fruit in our lives, Jesus. Even as we learn about you, Holy Spirit, you come and reveal uh, to us the wonders of the Lord. I pray that you would give us the wisdom to understand uh, and comprehend everything that we are about to learn about you. So thank you for this opportunity that we have. I thank you for your word that has been made available for us so that we can be equipped and we can be empowered. We can be enriched. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay. All right, good morning to you all once again. I hope you had a good uh, Sunday and good times rest uh, and a good sleep last night, especially good sleep. <laughs> uh, right, um, so we are in chapter three of this course. Um, we finished chapter one and chapter two, and they are quite extensive chapters, uh, pretty heavy in content. Uh, but we've covered quite a bit, and I hope you've been uh, able to cope with that. Um, I just hope I'm clear enough for you guys, no? Yeah, it's, okay. It's not too bassy or anything, right? Okay. Because I've been told I have a bassy voice. So, okay. So, um, chapter three, it talks about the father's works. Okay. The father's works. Um, and and time and time again, uh, and which we will read in the notes and we will learn from, uh, but of so many things, if I, if I were to ask this question okay, to you guys and also to those online, um, why did Jesus come to earth? Why did Jesus come to earth? <laughs> Francis. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm just... <laughs> yeah. Save us. Is that right? Did I hear right? Okay, save us. Okay. What else? To, to die on the cross to save us. Okay. He, he just didn't come to die on the cross and not do anything. <laughs> yeah, why did he come? He just came to die on the cross. You know. <laughs> yeah, why did why did he come? Why did Jesus come? To give us eternal life. To preach the gospel. To unite us with the Father. Okay. okay. Thank you. Why did Jesus come? To? To give us a change. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. To give us a change, okay. I, I I laughed because I'm I, I'm a person who doesn't like change. <laughs> yeah, Sri Radha. To save the lost, okay. Anthony says the same to save the lost, okay. Some of us are in sync, all right. What else? Sorry, Chair. He came to fulfill Father's will, okay? Same thing. Because he loves us so much. Oh, 100 marks, Vimal. 100 marks. <laughs> Safe answer. <laughs> His redemptive love for mankind. And Nina says, okay. For God sent Jesus, uh, Father God sent Jesus because of his uh, love for us sinners. Jesus obeyed his word and revealed us even unto death. Yeah. Amen. Um, so I hope you realize that there is no right answer or wrong answer in what you have said, right? And everything what you've said is absolutely correct, right? Absolutely right. Um, but and to destroy the works of the devil, yes, Nina, yeah. 
first john chapter 3 verse 8 yeah um but in everything that jesus did right everything that jesus did now let's go back to the genesis the fall right from the beginning we one of the chapters we looked at the source of this disease and sickness and whatnot is uh you know one of the reasons the main reason is the fall right it begins from there uh, and from genesis from the time of the fall as soon as adam and eve you know uh, partook or ate that uh, fruit i was going to say apple uh, as soon as they ate that fruit um right so there was a divide Right? There was a separation that happened with our spirit and the spirit of God. Yes or no? Right? Until then, you look at it, you see in, it says that God walked in the cool of the garden. Right? He walked. That means there was a habitation there between man and human. Sorry, between God, uh, uh, I was going to say divinity and humanity. Right? God was in, in the realm. Right? He was walking with Adam. When that came, there was a division. The presence of God had lifted. Isn't it? Uh, and so, from then, from the time of the fall in Genesis chapter 2, 3, all the way till Exodus 25, right, the time is between somewhere around 2,500 years. So why I'm saying Exodus chapter 20 oh, yeah, is because that's when Moses actually builds the tabernacle. right? Uh, until then, for 2,500 years, there was no resting place for his presence, for God's presence. Are you with me? And, and similarly, everything that has happened in the Old Covenant, or what we call it as the Old Testament, uh, there is, okay, you know, they had a certain view or a, a perspective of who this God is, right? So when you ask, uh, I mean, even an unbeliever, you know, you've seen in some of these movies that they refer to Old Testament as the wrath of God and the fire of God and all of that. Right? Old Testament is just wrath and fire and whatnot. <laughs> Uh, and that that was the perspective of okay, this God who is in heaven, uh, he's uh, like absolutely scary and always angry kind of a thing. Are you with me? But then Jesus comes. In everything he did, everything he did, it was to reveal the Father. By saving us from our sins, by saving us and giving us redemptive grace, uh, by dying on the cross, uh, he showed who this father is, right? Uh, by healing the sick, by healing, uh, you know, the lepers, cleansing the lepers and whatnot. But in everything that Jesus did, he revealed the father. And so let's look at the notes. It says, the Lord Jesus came to do the works of the father. It's in your first page, right? Uh, he said that he had to be about the father's business in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Okay, uh, he says he had to be about the father's business. He came to do the father's will, Hebrews chapter 10. And he came in the father's name, Gospel of John chapter 5 and chap uh, chapter 10. All right, so. And time and time again, I, 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 I don't think uh, there's uh, any other person who lived like so focused and determined <laughs> on just one thing. It's like, you know, uh, he was like single focused on just accomplishing, finishing the, uh, the, the will of the Father. And, uh, and just like how Jesus was called to complete the will of the Father or do the will of the Father, that you and I are called to do the same. Are you with me? Okay, I'll just continue a little bit more deeper in understanding what this chapter has to teach us. Okay, so once again, what, is, what did Jesus talk about the Father's work? Now, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law questioned Jesus, as like, okay, how do I believe you? Was Jesus questioned? Yes? Or did just everybody believe him? No, right? But Jesus was questioned. It's like, okay, how can you say who you say you are? Why should we believe you? Right? How? Now, out of all the things, supernatural things, okay, give me a list of supernatural things that happened uh, in, in the life of Jesus. I'm sorry? Water trying to wine, okay. His birth? Okay, what else? His birth was supernatural, isn't it? Well, let's have a debate about it. 
Okay. Okay. His birth, I mean, so many things about his birth itself, like say shepherds, the angels coming and speaking to shepherds, shepherds coming, uh, and then the wise men. Uh, what is his ministry, his life? Yeah, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that he did, okay. I mean, Jesus could have pointed out, let's just take his birth for the example. Jesus could have just said, do you guys know how I was born? You know, there are like thousands and thousands of angels sang song for my entry. You know what I'm saying? It's like all these Indian movies have these entry you know, song. <laughs> I mean, he could have just said any of that. Okay, you could have spoken about the wise men who just, you know, came from uh, from the far east. Uh, but instead of all of that, Jesus points to the things that he did. Right? He always pointed to the miracles and the healings and deliverance and signs and wonders, which we will kind of learn a little bit more deeper. Okay, so that's what Jesus pointed to. Um, so let's look at um, John chapter five, verse thirty-one to thirty-six. Vimal, can you read uh, the passage from your notes? John chapter 5, verse 31 to 36. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is me true. is true. Right? Okay, thanks. Let's just hold on for that. Okay. Un <laughs> It's amazing how it's written, okay? It's almost like a tongue twister. <laughs> it's like Betty Butter, Bitter Butter, Bitter Butter, but blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. What is witness? It's like proof or evidence. That's what it witnessing is, okay? So I witnessed this thing, you know, as I was standing there. You know, you, you hear people say the story, right? I witness. I saw this happened. I saw Rin took that cookie from the cookie jar. I saw it. You know, it's proof, evidence, right? Um, so that's what it is. And it goes on to say that um, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Okay, go on. Vimal. You have sent John and he has gone witness to the earth to the truth yet i do not receive testimony from man but i say these things that you may be saved he was the burning and shining lamp and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light but i have a greater witness that john's for the works which the father has given me to finish the very works that i do bear witnesses of me bear witness of me that the father has sent me the father has sent me okay so this is the, what is the context to what uh, uh, jesus is saying here in john chapter 5 verse 31 to 36 is jesus has just healed the crippled man at the, by the pool of bethesda right he, that's the context and then the disciples ask him about a, a bunch of questions and whatnot um and so jesus is saying you know what i'm not i'm not witness i'm not a witness for myself right uh, the one who has sent me is my witness and it, that which is truth and then he also talks something about john the baptist now john the it, what, how did he introduce jesus how did john the baptist introduce jesus his name is jesus please say hi to him okay jesus please say hi to them uh, this is a my introduction what the worst right his introduction of jesus was the most amazing introduction it's like behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world isn't it so and then i mean so that that what is that that was being a witness isn't it but jesus is saying even that witness was from a man that's the context there. he's saying that witness is good but it is still from a man Man's witnesses, yeah, okay, okay. But my father's witness weighs much more than John's witness. Right? And then he points out to say in the very last verse, verse 36, it says, But I have greater witness than John's. 
for the works which the Father has given me to finish. The very works that I do bear witness of me. Okay, so remember we started off this class by saying in everything that Jesus did, he came to reveal the Father, right? He came to reveal the Father. And so he goes on to say, the very works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. Okay, a greater witness than John the Baptist. So Jesus, again, time and time again, we are talking about how Jesus came to do the works of the Father. In doing the works of the Father, he revealed the Father to humanity, to you and me. Are you with me? Right? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and John the Baptist, we know about this famous chapter in Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Uh, yeah, can someone read that again? Vimal, if you don't mind, please. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had here in prison, in prison about the works of Christ, he sent to his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John, the things which you hear and see, the blind see, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Right. Thank you. Right, so the context again. Um, <clears throat> So the first verse, uh, in verse 1 of chapter 11, it says, Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. Verse 2, And when John heard in prison about the works of Christ. Okay, that's the key. So John heard about what Jesus is doing. And so that's what is referred as here as the works of Christ. So he heard about it. That means uh, he already knew that, okay, the blind is seeing, the deaf uh, can hear, um, and, the, and the dead are raised up. And still he sends his disciples to Jesus and say, okay, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Are you the coming one or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, go tell John, the things which you hear and see. I go tell John the things that which you hear and see. Now, again, in our context, what is Jesus saying? What is Jesus telling the disciples of John? Go tell John, I'm happy. I am living an amazing retired life. What did he tell? <laughs> the blind see and the lame walk. Yeah. The deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and poor have gospel preached to them. Uh, do you know this old song? I, I'm not sure if it's from Bob Fitz from the 80s, uh, 90s or early 2000s. Uh, we declare that the kingdom of God is here. Okay. No, clearly not. The blind see, the deaf hear, the layman are walking, sickness is flee at his voice. No? Yeah, yeah, Nina. <laughs> Slightly older folks know this, like me. Um, okay, so um, again, you see Jesus referring to the works that he's doing. Um, when he is questioned, okay, let's go to page 108 uh, or in your PDF to another page. Talks about uh, from John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7, where Jesus talks about that he must do the works, the Father's works. I read it for us John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. It says, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned this man? or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, 
but the works of God should be revealed in him. Okay, if you can highlight it, please highlight that line. It says, the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As I am in the world, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay. Uh, let's just pause there and say, so Jesus is saying, here, when the Lord Jesus saw a man born blind or sick, diseased and so on, he saw it as an occasion for the works of the Father to be revealed in that person. Not that God made him blind, but God through healing this man's blindness would reveal his works. Okay, so did you did you notice that? Okay, God did not make him blind, but God through healing this man can reveal his work. In other words, can reveal the Father's works. Right, guys, are you with me? Okay. Um, Sometime ago in, in our supernatural hour, we sang the song, Where You Go, I Go. What you say, I say. You remember that? Uh, I, I love I heard that song for the first time in 2008. Right? Where you go, I go. What you say, I say. I would be so scared to sing that song, uh, you know, in times of worship. Because just think about the declarations of the song. <laughs> where you go, I go. What you say, I say. And God is good, you know, and He's not like, you know, you don't. <laughs> you know, you don't. You don't say what I want you to say. There are things that come out of your mouth that I don't want you to say. Uh, there are places where you go to, uh, I wouldn't go. Uh, and then the chorus or the verse of that song, it goes on to say that Jesus only did what He saw you do, and He would only say what He heard you speak. Uh, I mean, we, we'll talk about the way that Jesus walked intimately with the Father, but um, I mean, if guys, we are talking about the Son of God here. We are talking about the Son of God. It is easy, for, and it is very easy for us to just, okay, yeah, Jesus came to do the works of the Father and forget or miss the significance that He is the very Son of God. And this Son of God made it his life's mission to obey and do the works of the Father. Are you with me? He was with the Father. In John chapter 17, when you read that whole chapter, you see, okay, Father, now glorify me with the glory that I had with you before. That means he was with the Father at the time of creation and everything. And... I don't know about you, there are a lot of aspects that you can take off from this, but one of the aspects that's standing out or the characteristics is standing out is the humility of Jesus. Right? He, Jesus could have said, okay, I'll do whatever I want to do, I can do because, you know, hey, are you forgetting? I'm part of the Trinity. We are co-partners. You know, I can do whatever I want to do. But then he would just submit everything and say, I will do, I am willing to do everything what you want me to do. I will say everything what you want me to say. How much more should we lean in? How much more should we make it our prayer? Are you with me? Right? Um, just to emphasize this a little bit more, I look at uh, in page 109 uh, or um, to the section that says, The works I do bear witness of me. Okay, that's page 71 for you in your PDF. Okay, John chapter 10. Vimal, can you read it for us, please? Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him... No, uh, can you read the scriptures for us, please? John chapter 10. John or... chapter 10, yeah. 24, 25. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Plainly, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Thanks. And the next passage, John chapter 10, verse John, 37, 38. John chapter 10, verse 37, 38. 
if i do not do the works my father do not believe me but if i do thou you do not believe me believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and i in him thank you okay so john chapter 10 this is the last passage it says if i do not do the works of my father do not believe me uh no in john chapter 10 verse 24 25 which vimal just read it starts off by saying then the jews surrounded him and said to him how long do you keep us in doubt if you are in christ tell us plainly can you imagine their frustration have you ever played one of these games um it's called strategy games or um you know where you ask of you don't know the answer to it and you say it's like it just just tell me what is it <laughs> you know uh <laughs> i mean i can just totally imagine the crowd being so irritated is like see jesus if you are the christ just tell us plainly that you are the christ uh but jesus is amazing right he answered them i told you <laughs> and you do not believe he's like i i said i've given you a very plain answer but you don't believe is that my problem right the works that i do in my father's name they bear witness of me D this is also the reason why some of the people who understood wanted to kill Jesus or stone Jesus. Because nobody in that society, as a, in, the, in the Jewish society, would make claims like what Jesus was making. Like doing the things of, I do what the things, what the Father tells me to do. I, I do what the, uh, I, you know, uh, what the Father tells me to say, etc., etc. You don't say things like that in the Jewish community. You will get killed. Okay, <laughs> But that's what Jesus is saying. I've told you plainly, you know, um, if I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. What are some of the things besides the works that Jesus did? The healings and deliverance. What are some of those things that Jesus did? He preached. He taught. Okay. He traveled and all of that, right? I mean, when Jesus is saying, if you do not believe me, at least believe in the works that I do. That means, okay, it's okay if you don't even, if you if you listen to my sermon and you forgot about my sermon, not a problem, but believe in what I am doing because what I am doing is the will and the works of the Father. Can you imagine that? Right? Okay, let's move on. Uh, and uh, now... The Pharisees and the Sadducees were not asking any questions. His disciples began to ask him questions in John chapter 14. Uh, can someone else uh, uh, read that, please? Uh, Chira, why don't you read John 14, 1 to 13? John 14, 1 to 13. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I will have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas, Thomas said him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way jesus said to him i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me if you had known me you would have known my fathers also and from now on you know him and have seen him philip said to him lord so as the father and it it is sufficient for us jesus said to him have i been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has, sent, has seen the Father. So how can you say, so as, the fa so as the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and Father in me? 
the work that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the work themselves. Uh, thanks, Jira. We'll stop there. Right? I want to re-emphasize that scripture. Please look that scripture with me, verse 10. It says, do you not believe that I am in the Father? Okay, pause. Uh, what's the context here? Uh, I mean, after seeing everything what Jesus has done. Now, let's just say, you know, okay, the disciples so far, we are only in the 15th chapter, 14th chapter of John. Let's say the disciples have been with him for, say, two years or so. Okay? And in these two years, they have seen quite a bit of everything what Jesus has done. They have some understanding, at least, <laughs> hoping. Um, right? And then Jesus goes, he's, they are preparing, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. He's saying, okay, I'm going to be gone very soon, uh, but I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. It is in that context. Uh, and then uh, who says this? Thomas. Okay. Thomas said to him, Lord, we got to love Thomas, right? Thomas is amazing. Lord, we, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? It's Google Maps. Uh, so it's just, uh, it, it, I like it because uh, I, I mean I like these disciples. They are so much like me or us. We think you know, okay, they are like somewhere elevated and whatnot. They are just such simple people, just like us. Simple questions, just like we would have. Uh, and it's so innocent, right? Like it's almost cute. <laughs> right? Like, uh, yeah, so all, all that is good, Lord, but we don't know where you're going. So, how do we, you know? <laughs> uh, and also, I have to appreciate Jesus is patient. Jesus was like, oh boy, what do I say now? To... <laughs> right? Uh, but Jesus, in his all humility and his wisdom, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said to him, uh, No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. Okay, that word known in Greek is the word intimate, is used there, right? The word intimate. Okay, you remember this passage uh, where um, Jesus says, on that day, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, in your name we did this, in your name we did that. You remember that? Yes? We preached, we healed, we did this. And what, what was Jesus' response? Go away, for I do not know you. Okay? So the word know is not just to say the knowledge. Like, okay, I know you, I know of you. Like, oh yeah, I know this person. Tell my name. Recommendation letter. They know me. It's not just that. The Greek word there is intimate. Again, it, it's used in the same land where when Mary was pregnant with Jesus, it, it says that, okay, during the time of her pregnancy, Mary didn't, Joseph did not know her or Mary did not know her. So that means, in other words, literally it means that they did not have an intimate relationship. Are you with me? So here when Jesus is saying, if you had known me, or if you intimately know who I am, you'll know who my father is. Um, we've broken that word many times before, the word intimate, intimacy. Right? If you break that word down, you get into me, you see, because I show you. Right? Into me, you see. And I intimately know you, is what it is. Right? I know, uh, I mean, some of us have best friends. Uh, best friends have gone out of trend these days, I guess. <laughs> right? Uh, so you, there must be one person in your life where you know, okay, this is this this is that person's favorite color, this is the person's favorite cuisine, uh, this is what irritates that person. Are you with me? Okay, you know this is what irritates that person, and you will do that to irritate that person. Right? All of that is to just show how close you are and how intimately you know that person. Are you with me? Right? And just. Saying, I mean, Jesus is saying, if you had known me, that means that means Jesus is saying that, okay, hey, you don't know me yet, right? 
And if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him. Look at that statement, guys. Okay. From now on, you know him and have seen him. By this point, you think that the disciples would get it. Right? If you had known me, you, you would know the Father. But from now on, you have known him, you have seen him. Philip, just like me, <laughs> he said to him, <laughs> This must have been an amazing setting, guys. I mean, like, a, you know, this conversation must be sparkling. Okay. Philip said to him, Lord, <laughs> show us the Father, <laughs> and it is sufficient for us. <laughs> okay. Um, this, these moments like this, you no, know, you wish you could hear Jesus' mind voice. You know what a mind voice is? <laughs> it's like you can't really hear another person's, you know, what, what the person is thinking. I wonder what Jesus must have been thinking at that time, you know? <laughs> so Jesus, again, in all his humility and in all his wisdom and patience, Jesus said to them, he must have taken a, you know, <sighs> okay, all right, Philip. I Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? <laughs> he who has seen me, has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So that's the context and the build-up to all these things, right, so far. And then he says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The word that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does this work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. After Jesus said everything he had to say, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I do everything what the Father tells me to do. Uh, I say what the Father tells me to say. All of that. And then he still says, even if you don't believe in all that, believe in the works that I do. The underlying statement being, the works that I do are the Father's works. Are you guys with me? Right? Um, so let's just pause here uh, before we continue and uh, we'll resume from um, in the next session from where we left off. Okay? So we'll break, uh, we'll, we'll break for a break. So. <laughs> okay? I'll see you all in 10.